We're not wall bars. This looks unsafe. Oh no. Oh no. Hell's on your mind. Oh no. You know what this is. You know what this is. <laughs> it's time to. This is best. death! <laughs> no, 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 no. Yep. Absolutely not, dude. Uh, this is gonna be like if this is twenty eight percent or below, like I'd I'd be surprised if we had above twenty eight percent of a shot. Uh, let's spend our point though. Or hold on, hold on. Let's see what's going on here first. Because <laughs> I I'm gonna I do want to put it into authority and then start carrying that book. You know. Oh boy. You want to get strong or you want to get just, strong? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. Also, how do you know it's even safely secured, man? Mm -hmm. I don't see any clips on the side of that. Two plates? It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's <laughs> Lift them. Uh... There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Clearly. Yep. Why does it feel so familiar? This legendary 17%. You noticed the colors. So we got a little bit more on it. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of a bastard would just remove the collars? Actually, a yeah. felony. <laughs> I don't care about safety hazards. <laughs> It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Mm hmm Could they have been used for murder? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. Dude, I feel like even if you were to successfully, like, curl it, the moment you dropped it on the ground, it would just go right through the wooden floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Yeah. You, you do hear the whistle, though. Mm. Bruised knees from scraping. The bar against your shins. Back when you could one hand this <laughs> as the disco ball spun and lit up the fucking floor. With cocaine in your eyeballs. Oh, yeah. In one of them. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to touch that one. That's literally a death check. <laughs> That's fair. Even if it had its fucking clips on it, it's a death check. Yep. <laughs> Another floor. It's dark. The lieutenant states the obvious. I was about to pull out my flashlight. And the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. I was literally about to do that. Mm hmm. Fair point. Yes, totally obvious. Right. Now let's get to it. We're just gonna let it slide, Kim. But will you stop acting up, please? <laughs> Always blocked by old window panes and debris. Oh, music. I like the textures. Yeah. On the walls and the boards. Like, it's an amazing job of, like, 3D models and, and painterly effects mixing and blending together. Mm. 
wild animal statue in the dark stuffed and mounted. How much is a demijohn? Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Excuse me? How much is a demijohn? Demijohn? Yeah, what's that? A carboy? 1 to 16 US gallons. Well, that's pretty. <laughs> that's a large range. Creepy statue. We can't reach that yet. Let's keep over here. Oh, that is dusty. <laughs> Naked mannequin torso. Strange yellow color. Ugh. You gotta, you gotta clean it. Hey! That's a lot of real. Decent. Almost enough for a book. <laughs> just, just reading books on the street, huh? <laughs> Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. More money. Almost enough for a room. Antlers on the walls. Skis with slipstream printed on the uh, laminated top layer. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Production schedule filament memory. Ten real. What's that about? Cube-like crisscross of filaments feel oddly fragile in your hand. Its intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads, Production schedule. Note, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Okay. Worth 10 bucks. We still have his handkerchief. Mm -hmm. Embroidered portier. And we still have his pen. <laughs> With a side order of resentment. <laughs> nice. Don't lose the pen. We're gonna lose the pen. <laughs> Whoa. What's going on here? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. Mm -hmm. The radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Let's go. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing the recent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Shout out to the sound design team. Cool sounds. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Naturally. What happens if we play without it, though? Nothing happens. Like a smooth drawer. The filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? So you saw that big cube on the map, right? Mm-hmm. The static gets louder, True. slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good morning, Fortress Accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat, is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? Filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing I put inside? All right. Thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password 
Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. You should ask her for a hint. Hmm, a password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? It's uh, my birthday? Uh, yeah, we're going three. We're going three here. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for press accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? Hmm. Password. I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. <laughs> Come on, like this uppercase, lowercase numbers. What do I need? No. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. In video game world, yes, they do. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Why'd you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. That's a weird name. You have any company information? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. I was not expecting this to be like a live connection to someone. Yeah. Produces revolutionary interactive call in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And what that what's that? This interactive call it radio game. Any other questions? Hmm. You hear her ask when the connection finally improves. Are you a machine or are you alive? She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Mm. Ivan, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. <laughs> okay, but where are you? How'd you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insel Indian repeater station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the river Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Heading for her retirement any day now, I'm sure. Soon, soon. Please tell me if there's anything else I can do for Tres Accident. That's all. Thank you, and goodbye. Old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Print. Nothing happens. Okay. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. So we gotta get that, and then we gotta get our ten bucks after we finish with it. Lots of stuff to do. Tiles on the cube are. St What's going on with these walls? Oh, that's a door. It's an observation point. Scribbled across a notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Yeah. He's flex on it. Uh -huh. Zap. Mm. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Hmm. Inspect the drawings. Drawings. That one looks nice. So now for These something. Live, pointy eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax based magic. 
Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even Ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness yeah. of silent space. Fuck that, dude. I don't want to see your organs. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? Just making a D&D character, that's all. Although, like, if you ever got into, like, a fight, you could just, like, target the liver. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> all the soft spot. You should adopt one of those Wilkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a Welkin. Oh, God, what is happening here? Why are you locked on a scroll? Stop it. Okay. The scroll is locked in. I can't make it not oh that's weird clickety click 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 one of the welkins oh that's weird towering among the rest what if you click on the scroll itself different however weird oh god damn it the mouse fell on the keyboard for one second and then this happened so there might be a button to activate this <laughs> all right let's just finish this prompt off you want to examine it's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says all non Welkin races will be purged. Shit. What kind of DD games are these? Well, people? that's oh, yeah. weird. That's not comfy. Uh, comfy, excuse me. Um, scroll lock, what are you doing? Is it scroll lock? It is not scroll lock. Reload, it's a common bug, says the universe. I can't reload in a conversation. You Damn. have to go through with it. All right. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. Yeah. <laughs> Fantasy racism. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welkin creatures. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? On fantasy racism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. What a waste of time. <laughs> you know the rule book is at least seven tomes <laughs> for that. <laughs> Where's Kim from again? Say all. Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, who are these creatures? Uh, you know, let's just go keyboard on this. Uh, where do I draw them? Are they real? I have so many questions. Mm, one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. He's, he's, yes. It, his parents are. Oh, my B. It's true. He's from Revachal. He's a proud Revacholian. It's true. I forgot. My bad. That's kid. fucked up. That was really messed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Sure, it's not really real. Okay. One of them is Welkin supremacists. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. Oh, that, no, it's the Welkin's facial hair. Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for game. <laughs> uh, just oozing. Mm -hmm. Oozing commentary. Just look at those details. So much effort. Inspect the photos? The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. So we have a bookstore with lots of narrative prompts right next to uh, an RPG maker. Right. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers 
boreal dwarg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much-needed respite from our own world. Yes, eggnog, morphine, same battle. Yeah, I like how they're they're both in the same sentence there too. <laughs> postcard reads the heat death scenario a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun drifting through the universe damn okay what about the schedule this is a monthly calendar from the year 50 cryptic words like sprint daily minimum oh. and gpi span the marker drawn grid the grand scheme of production and money. We were hearing about Wee Rao back in um, in the bookstore, weren't we? Yes, we were. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting into fucking agile development with sprints and daily uh, requirements. And oh god, I don't miss that at all. Oh, you you don't the, the you don't want to learn about Elvin scr uh, Scrum <laughs> system? Oh, I'm good. Or, I or Scrum fine. rather, Elvin <laughs> Elvin Jesus. Scrum. Mini me stands for a mini meeting it's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago but failed God, what happened are you okay yes th this is coming all back to me like failing to implement new development processes because people can't get behind it and they don't do the thing because we're doing it a way that already works why would we have to change and it's causing too much effort and friction to change things so we're not gonna do it but we're gonna spend meetings over and over again to try to implement the thing that nobody wants to implement <sighs> just just selling dreams that's just what's happening that's just what's happening <sighs> business infrastructure is a business Reggie. as time goes on the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer the board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days only failure and regret dwell in this region yep it's like they didn't make it the lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness a note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Of course. <laughs> okay, this is really annoying. Let's just fix that quick. Time to read old. But yeah, this is. Of this course. God. Of course. Whatever amount was occurring in outsourcing, I promise you. There was five times as many meetings happening <laughs> internally yeah. oh, as multiple departments had to come together. It hurts. It hurts. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles. Some of the writing has faded with it. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. I feel like the way to write this story would be to write it and then to take on one of these characters and write it again 24 times over. Yeah. That's the only way to do this, isn't it? You write it, and then you make your branches, and then with each, you stop and go, what would this voice say here? Yeah. And you put yourself inside of that. And person. how does it work with the narrative and the story? That would be great. makes you want to go over it again in lines drawn immediately in blue and red marker the mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin it looks ghostly and strangely ancient the whole thing resembles cadran mosaic tiles very pesantic hold on now how do i know what cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like 
history classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medically here? Mm -hmm. This must be an elaborate piece of art. I'm going to go and head, uh, I'm going to assume this. Yeah. Of course, the anatomy of the curse. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station it wants. Oh my god. It's fucking radio D D. What a wa wow. Yeah? Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. Thanks, authority. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this <laughs> off. So it's a role-playing server. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good. <gasps> Kim K. That is good. <laughs> Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. He nods at the calendar on the ch chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained fingers clean. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. No, no, he don't miss. <laughs> Steph Curry from the moon. <laughs> God, he's good. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Someone tried to exercise the curse using technology? Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. I've never heard that term before, but I'm going to use context clues to assume that steepling is the act of putting your fingers together in a church steeple-like shape. Right, 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 yeah. Con good. Context clues. Yeah. Uh, how are they planning to do that? Has anyone done this before? And this was a role-playing game. What do you think happened to the company? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master Frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Mm. This sounds infinitely more complex simply because it's not a DM speaks to everyone, everyone speaks to DM situation, you know? Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. That sounds... That's, that's insanely complex. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. Hmm. I mean, this, this was, was a role-playing game. Yeah. Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. 
The world looks like a modified version of the We Were board game with his death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. <laughs> this game is too good to be left unfinished. <laughs> How much cold hard cash do you put down that this is literally a project that they wanted to make? at some point that never fucking came to fruition Damn. and they're just throwing themselves under the bus i could believe it <laughs> i could absolutely believe it the check is 68 <laughs> percent. it's white oh man what do you think happened to the company no idea they stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard yep see this is what happens when you don't jump on uh, a fucking uh revishal kickstarter <laughs> oh support, boy support yep yep your stretch goals mean it gets even more fucking complicated apparently Zaum was once called fortress accident uh, well there you go <laughs> a nice detour throwing themselves squarely under the bus yeah. Never forget. Showing the ideas that they... Is this just a Wooly Will Figure It Out episode? <laughs> Is this what we're doing? We just talking about our failures right now? Because it really feels like it. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The lieutenant tilts his head, thinking... And our in-game characters from our successful project are critiquing our failed project. <laughs> They were insane if they thought they could do this. It was just a play to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. The curse got them. I see no other explanation. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. Do we have any money? Let's give them more money so that they can finish it and make it even bigger. Nintendo, hire this man! <laughs> yes, especially in here. The lieutenant looks around the derelict room. The pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor in front of your feet. Okay, let's keep moving. Wow. But hold on, there were, there were... This old fireplace, the whole thing resembles oh. Kadran. I guess not. All right. So then, um... Authority, so we can carry the clipboard. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Inland empathy, yep. I believe that was the plan. Uh, otherwise... The only other thing... I mean, half-light is pretty fucking low. Or we can just shiver up all day. Yeah. Getting a little bit more physical ain't too bad. Volition up ain't too bad either. Savoir faire suffering. Yeah. Uh, let's give us this, let's give ourselves the two for one. Let's give the next level we get, we can start uh, balancing out. And savoir faire, savoir faire is in fact suffering hard. Um, <laughs> we're gonna need to get that back at some point. Yeah. We have zero panache. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna start hearing from authority more too. We can just ignore it. <laughs> it's hard to ignore. Well, as long as we hold our clipboard, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna drop. But like, if we ever take it off, we're gonna hear from it more. Um, and what we're wearing as well. So on the far left, you have all the bonuses from the items oh, listed. Yep. Okay. Orange bum hat gives you minus one. Uh, Inland Empire. The necktie gives you plus one. Suggestion. Okay. Physical instrument up from the tank top. Very stylish. Electro on the on the trousers. Half light down on the coat. Reaction speed up on the hat. Savoir. Oh, the shoes and the trousers are affecting your savoir faire. Okay. Interfacing. Uh, gloves. And snakeskin shoes. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I like what we're wearing, you know? I'm, I'm fine with the... <laughs> I'm fine with the, 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 the breakdown so far. Um... Logic for authority, but we're about to lose two. Yeah, no, this is this this configuration's fine. All right, so so we can keep going then. Yeah. Ledger activated, and then top you off a little bit. There. Now we're good. Two for the price of one. Uh, wasn't there something before we hit that door? Was there nothing? Uh, didn't I see another prompt in here? No, I didn't. Okay. All There's right. There's a prompt there on you now. Oh. When you go there, yeah. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, why, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? What strange leap of the imagination, yet they still failed, how sad. That's just speculation, we don't know anything for sure. That's a good question. <laughs> strange leap of imagination, yet they failed, how sad. We don't know anything for sure. Reality is ruthless. Brutal. Weird little thought there. Alright. Oh shit. Yeah, before we hit the door. There's a lot of stuff here. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes. Folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Knock on it harder. Still, nothing. Knock even harder. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. If this is really an entrance to the chimney, then there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Well, can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? <laughs> it wasn't random. Uh, <laughs> I need to find a malignant entity, Kim. This is the chimney. This is significant. I want to see what's on the other side. I can try. Thanks. In any case, there's no way we can get in right now. Oh my god. Let's investigate. It lets you keep going. <laughs> Bong. Headbutt. Shoes in the puddle of melting snow. Yeah. Is that toilet paper? Cash money. Postcard, La Delta 51. Now we have two postcards. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia toned. Midtown traffic passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist. Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. One dollar. Yeah, that hurt. We'll see if we get a natural heal. Yeah, police work is tough. Mm -hmm. Boiler room? Is it? Not quite. Got yep. some money though. Almost there. Big wind. <laughs> Yo. You see okay. a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the bear's eyes are glowing red. That bear is cool. <laughs> I want that fridge. That's quite, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> uh, 
Okay. It's just it's always weird with the placement of the of the opening sometimes though, you know? Quickly, children, get into Pikachu's vagina. <laughs> it's safe. Have you seen No? I, I, think, yeah. I think I've seen it's, that. It's just, you know. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. Crack open the door. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Will you crack open the door or should will we you back keep, off? We should maybe look around first, I feel. I feel like opening that fridge might lead to some sort of... Let's find out. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. I was fucking almost certain a body was going to fall out of it. Oh, <laughs> my God. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Hey, relax, Kim. It's the fridge. Look inside the fridge. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Hmm. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Okay, something to examine afterwards. What about one of these ice cream wrappers? A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Mm -hmm. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in delight. Yeah, all the children love Big Murder Bear. Yeah, just make him cute enough, you know. So they said they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. <laughs> what is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. Mm. The points at the red snaky cable running from the fridge. It's still plugged in. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity <laughs> in this thing must be catastrophic. Damn. What would you do for Revachol Ice? A, a murder Klondike? <laughs> uh, ice cream maker de defrosted and unplugged. Ice cream maker sounds like a troublesome machine. Uh, my mom bought one <gasps> when we were back in Grenada and she really 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 wanted to learn how to make ice cream and um, it didn't work out you know it was ice cream at home <laughs> okay <laughs> I see <laughs> handwritten note found in the giant bear fridge Still have bear some uh, bears ha ah, some marks from the fruit shaf uh, shaped kitchen magnets that were used to secure it f to the refrigerator door. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. <laughs> Pull the note away. My note! <laughs> Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. Ah. You find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home. ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Sully Swaff. Okay, I wonder who wrote that note. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. Yeah, like a fire alarm test. Forever. Go home. Remind me again, what's a filament memory? Well, I mean, we know, but... It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. It's like the production schedule you found. 
Only this one's an off-site copy. Mm-hmm. Who is the illiterate ginger kid? Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> you don't have a single guess? The lieutenant looks at you, the corner of his mouth curved into a smug grin. You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed. Okay. It's an hour encounter. We have to do those obvious prompts. Mm -hmm. We just got XP for doing it. Yeah. So even when it's just like, uh, what? And we already know what's up, we have to do them. Because that's, that's free XP. Damn. All right. We need to solidify the information to get that XP. Uh, do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. All right. We've been getting XP for the randomest stuff, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> Flashlight casts a strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. Oh, 